Hey guys, it's Monica at Academic Phoenix Plus and welcome to another tutorial in lighting. Lighting in Maya using the Arnold Render. So in previous tutorials, we went over the legacy lights, which you can find under Create Lights, and there's several lights over here. But this time we're actually looking at the Arnold lights. So we have Arnold lights and we have our list of lights here. So the one we're gonna look at today is the Sky Dome. So the sky dome light is very similar to the physical sky. Physical sky we actually did on a previous tutorial and it creates a, d a sphere around our object. In this case, a sky dome is very similar. It's going to be uh, emitting light based on a dome. So let's check it out. Here we have a Maya file, which you can download for free at academicphoenixplus.com in its source images. It has several HDR maps that we're gonna be using. For example, we have Highway Noon, which is over here. I think we, which is a perfect, a nice daylight scene. Notice that the sun is up here. We have a night scene, so uh, we can take a look at what that looks like as well. Then we have kind of like a uh, city dusk. And then we have a studio lighting, which is great to see how your textures are in a basic a studio lighting. And also almost like a sunset, soft, shadowy uh, scene as well. So we're gonna test out each of these lights using the dome. So again, you can download this file and the HDR images at academicphoenixplus.com. I did get the HDR images under HDRI Heaven. So if you go to, I do want to do a call out for them. Um, they are 100% free HDRIs for you to use. So please take a look at them. Uh, you can always go to their site and take a look at their textures, but also they have a lot of amazing different types of HDRIs and we are going to explore those today. So thank you very much HDRI Heaven for providing all these wonderful domes for us to use and to make our stuff look awesome. All right, let's get started with our scene. All right, so we have a basic setup. We have a Lambert, which is 50% gray. This invisible sphere is actually a glass. Over here we have Chrome and then we just have a regular default um, Arnold shader used with the color pink just to kind of give it some uh, get some color. All right, let's take a look at our lights. So let's go to Arnold Lights Sky Dome and immediately we get a giant sphere around our environment. I just press on the letter F to uh, kind of zoom out. Now I'm going to zoom back in. You'll notice on the right that we do have some options here. The nice thing about this dome is that it already starts emitting light. So what's happening with this dome is that in this scenario, since it's light on all directions and it's white, it almost looks like an occlusion. Just like all the other lights, we have intensity so we can make it brighter. We do have a resolution, which is going to be for our files and a couple of other ones that you have seen before. But let's focus on the color. The color is the big one. We are going to attach an HDRI map and it has to say HDR file. And the reason why is because it's going, it's a particular file that Maya can read that's going to treat every single pixel like a tiny little light. So even though your render times may increase, it's going to be photorealistic lighting. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So let's click on color. Uh, we're going to click on the little checker, click on file, click on that little folder. And if you set your project correctly, you should get your source images. And this is the preview. This is the one we want. The one that looks like that has HDR and it's a little bit big. It's a 1.4 file. I'm going to click on open and uh, you'll see that the dome has been replaced like so. So you can see the floor and everything. And let's see what that looks like in Arnold. Press play. So immediately you're going to notice that this looks like garbage. And uh, part of it is because we are using information from uh, HDR that we need to tell it to look at raw, like at the raw file. So raw basically stands for that there is no compression. You don't need to try to gamma correct it or anything, which is what Maya tries to do when it renders. It's like, hey, let me try to be helpful and make some changes for you. We really want to tell Maya, Maya, don't do that, please. Just go ahead and use the raw samples. So over here in your file, and just in case you get lost or need to find it, just go to color and click on this little output. Um, scroll down and you're going to see something called the color space. The default is sRGB. We're going to click on that and look for something called raw. Now we're going to take a look at what we get. Press play. 
and now we have something much nicer. You'll notice right away that it looks nice. Uh, the second thing you'll notice is how uh, how cool the lighting is. Notice that we're getting some cool shadows. Uh, there's a lot of really interesting information going on in the shadows. We're also getting a nice terminator along here. And uh, it's a pretty bright light coming in and uh, looks very realistic. Let's try to zoom in a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and take this and just kind of snap it over here. Hopefully it doesn't kill my computer. And now we're going to zoom in a little bit just to get some a nicer, closer look. Cool. So this is a really nice light if you're trying to make your environment or your scene or your character, because you can use this to light your character, um, look very realistic and have a nice sharp shadow. So just keep that in mind as you start plugging HDRIs that what type of mood or what type of look you're trying to give your character or your environment. So right now, this is working really well. It's a little noisy, but again, we can increase our settings. Let's try a different one. Let's grab... Satara Knight. This is going to be a, whoa, that looks crazy, but let's see what that looks like. So same story with this one. Notice that it automatically changes the color space to sRGB and we're getting some psychedelic um, artifacting, which if you're trying to go abstract, you're more than welcome to keep this. But for the rest of us, we're just trying to create something that we can actually recognize. Uh, we're going to go ahead and change this to raw. So let's change that to raw and right away, look at the different feel that we get. In the previous one, it was very sharp. The shadows were super sharp, but in this scenario, we're actually getting some really nice lighting. So again, it kind of puts a different mood to your scene. If your character, for example, if you're trying to show off your character and it's some sort of evening scene that you want to emphasize, I would probably use something like this. We are getting some noise, so let's crank up our settings. There's a couple of places you can crank up your settings. The first one is your resolution. Your resolution basically means how big is actually your image. If you're not 100% sure, let's go to Photoshop and see what is the dimensions of this scene. I believe that I downloaded a 1K map and it actually says 1K, so it should be okay at 1000, but let's see if we can fix the resolution a little bit. Let's go to image, image size, and my width is 1K, which is 1024. So that means that I want to take my resolution and change this to 1024 as well. Other things that we can do is increase our examples here, our samples here, sorry, our shadow samples. So we can click that to two, right? So notice that the specs are starting to kind of start to dwindle a little bit. I usually increase it to three, to be honest, three to four, nothing higher. And I'm going to go to my render settings over here under Arnold and we can increase this. So for example, let's increase our camera AA to four, then we can increase our diffuse, specular, transmission. I don't have any subsurface and maybe even our, well, actually we don't have volume, so we'll skip that one to two. Notice immediately that we're getting some nicer looking renders. It's taken a little longer, which is expected, but at the same time, we're getting some really nice renders. I'm gonna turn on enable the adaptive sampling. So that means that it's gonna go from four to eight, depending. Arnold is pretty smart about rendering, so it's going to reevaluate certain areas to make sure that it's calculating correctly and then kind of go from there. Obviously, the higher the settings, the nicer the image. The sacrifice that you have to make is time. So if you're trying to create something really beautiful and aesthetic that has a lot of really nice reflections and refractions and bounce light and all that stuff, you're going to have to sacrifice time. It's going to take longer to render, but the results are going to be beautiful and it's worth it. So usually when you render an object, you definitely want to increase these values, but I would increase them at the end. Once everything's looking good, once your render is looking nice, it's just noisy, then you crank up your values and let it run. So already we're noticing that the ground is significantly less noisy. And once I go, I'm really curious about this side right here. So I'm going to go ahead and let it render for a little bit. And then I'm going to pause because you don't have to sit with me as I wait. So I'm going to pause the video and I'll be right back. All right, let's take a look. It wasn't too bad. It was a minute and 48 seconds. Not bad at all. Cool. Notice how nice my sphere is looking right here. We're still getting some nice contact shadows. We're getting some nice lighting and you can see the beautiful reflections. So it still can be bumped up the values a little bit more, but I'm gonna go ahead and move forward. Let's go ahead and check out another light. Let's go here or another um, HDR dome. Let's click on this little 
guy right here, and let's pick up, uh, this is called Shanghai Bund, whatever that means. Uh, maybe somebody can tell me what that means, but we're going to go to this one. So we're probably going to get something crazy. There he goes. Let's go to raw. Beautiful. Again, we're getting some really nice values. We're getting some beautiful color. Um, it really depends, again, what you're trying to achieve. But this is another example of very quickly just changing your, your HDR file to get a different result, which is very pretty and very aesthetic. So uh, I really enjoy HDRI images, but you have to be careful. You don't want to go crazy. Um, you don't want to be adding crazy HDR images and then you can't really see your character. You ha your main concern is to make sure that your character and objects are lit in the best of your ability and so it can be seen. You don't want the background to be distracting or anything like that. So let's talk about that a little bit. Notice that when I'm rendering, it picks up all the reflections here, but you may not want this really dramatic, noisy background. I'm going to go ahead and stop this. Let's go back to the actual light itself. If you scroll down under camera, there's something that uh, you can just, it's this little slider under visibility. Let's go ahead and drag that to zero. So when I, and then I'm going to do a snapshot just so you guys can see the difference. Snapshot. Let's press play. Oh boy, now it's taking up even more space. Oh, I usually use double monitor, so I'm really sorry about this. So I'm trying to make it work. But really the biggest results is what we want is here. So by changing the camera to zero, notice that the background is now gone, but the reflections are still there and so is the lighting. So this is really important to understand so that whenever you want this, uh, if you want a blank background so that the alpha map uh, is there, and then you can just add whatever background you want in the back. Whoops, that's luminosity. It can, it gives you con the control that you want. Now you can keep the background if you want to, but I usually just add my own background. Other things in the light that you might want to play with is um, it can actually impact all sorts of things. So if you feel that this light is affecting too much of the diffuse, for example, I can reduce the impact of the, of the light on the diffuse, which is the color, by 50%. Or if I feel like my specularity is too high, I can actually go in and say, I only want to see 0.25 of that specularity and the specularity will just start to fade away. So these are really great ways of being able to control the amount of light that impacts your objects. So Arnold's very strong. Okay, one more. One last one. I got, I don't know what this means. Tears of Steel Bridge. So that sounds really depressing but I'm pretty sure it's going to be beautiful. Let's take a look at it in raw. There you go. Some really nice colors coming through. Look at the nice shadow information there. I'm going to rotate this so the shadow is a little bit back here. But now notice that we have such nice, almost like a green tone. Then we have purple shadow, so we get a nice sunset feel. And uh, there you go. So that is the introduction to HDRI lighting. Um, again, you could download this uh, file and the textures or, and the file HDRI files uh, at academicphoenixplus.com. So you can have a little fun with it. Please let me know if you have any questions by leaving comments below. You can also contact me at my website, academicphoenixplus.com, and sign up for my newsletter so you can get some updates and uh, about workshops and all these extra things that I'm doing on this side. So uh, thank you again for listening. I really appreciate it. Uh, let me know if you want more of these or if you have any other suggestions for future tutorials. Have fun lighting, and I will see you next time.